Once we worked out the probability of individual events by using the equal likelihood method or the relative frequency method, we then want to find out the probability of combinations of events. And there are three rules that we need to be able to use uh, for this approach. The first one is to work out the probability of one event A or another event B. And I'll put the answer up and then we can look at an example. All we do is simply add the separate probabilities together. So the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B, as long as A and B cannot happen together. If A and B are what's called mutually exclusive, which is exactly what it says. They mutually exclude each other. If A happens, B can't happen, and vice versa. So, for example, with our dice, if I roll a dice, what's the probability of getting a 3 or a 5? They can't happen together. If you get a 3, it excludes a 5, and vice versa. So we can use this rule here, and we just get the probability of a 3 plus the probability of 5, which is 1 sixth plus 1 sixth, which comes to one third. Sometimes, however, two different uh, outcomes could possibly occur together, and then we need a different rule, a more complicated rule, which is that the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability that they can both happen. In the first case, that was zero, because A and B was impossible. If one happened, the other couldn't. But if it is a possibility, we need to subtract it. So for example, if I wanted to find uh, the probability, when I select a card from a pack, what's the probability of an ace or a spade? The chance of an ace is 4 out of 52, because there are 4 of them. Spades, there are 13 out of 52. And the ace and the spade is what we normally call the ace of spades, and there's one of those. There's one card that is an ace and a spade, so we need to take away the chance of getting that one card, which is 1 out of 52, and so if we add those together, 17.52, take away 1.52, we're back to 16.52, which is 4 thirteenths. So we need to be aware of that correction term when the two events can both happen together. The third rule is what we often think of as AND, the chance of A and B, and this is found by multiplying the two probabilities together. And an example of this would be, suppose I toss a coin and roll a dice. What's the probability of getting a tail and a two? Well, the chance of a tail is a half, and the chance of getting a two when I roll a dice is one out of six just like these probabilities up here. And so the chance overall of getting a, a tail and a two, multiplying fractions, very easy, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, and we get a twelfth. And it's worth remembering that whenever you combine events, the probability gets smaller. It's less likely the more that you demand. And so we, we need to be aware of that and make sure we multiply our fractions together correctly. This is an example of when it's helpful to have probability as fractions. It's much easier to multiply than to multiply decimals. And next time we'll go on to see how we can use these methods when we analyse uh, complicated sequences of events.
Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on. Well done.